hear me and hear me well by the mandate of heaven because God has spoken this year is a year of open heavens Welcome to Moment of Change, and I am your host, Pastor DM Tickley. I want to thank you and thank God for your being around today to share with us God's word. What a privilege to be with you. Last week we began to discuss something which we titled The Most of Your Life, how you can fulfill the most of your life and today we want to take the second part of that message and uh, I believe that is going to be a great great blessing to us but before we go on today let's have a word of prayer father we thank you for your word thank you for what you are about to say to us again even as we look into the most of life grant us understanding we ask in Jesus name amen and amen we we'll go back to our text uh, just to recap and uh, is in the book of John Gospel chapter 9 and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind Jesus answered neither had this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him and he says I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can walk as long as I, I am the world I am the light of the world this scripture uh, Jesus Christ in verse 4 stated here I must walk the works of him that sent me why it is day the night cometh when no man can walk and we ex we began to see last week that for what Jesus have said here that there is a must of life because when he uses the word there must Jesus Christ was trying to emphasize is a word of emphasis that this is this thing I'm doing is obligatory it is mandatory it is something that I cannot do without. It's something that I don't have a choice. That's what, that's what the, the word must means. Whether you like it or not, this is what it ought to be. And I'm saying to us that every one of us must come to the place where we know that there is a must of life and discovery of the most of life is the greatest and the most important thing about life because until you come to know the most of life you will just be existing and not fulfilling your destiny just to recap Jesus Christ made more statements about this most of life and for the purposes of just uh, the records and to emphasize and to recap i'd like us to just look at those scriptures quickly and we find one of them in luke chapter 2. this was the time when jesus was 12 years old and uh, he was with his parents they went for a church program so to say and for some reason he was left behind the temple and the parents were looking for him for so many days and in verse 49 of Luke 2 and he said unto them how is it that you sought me we see not that I must be about my father's business 
the parents saw him and they were asking him why have you done this to us in verse um, 48 and when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said unto him son why has thou thus dealt with us behold thy father and i have sought thee sorrowing we we, we think that you are lost why have you done this to us remember they have been looking for him for days and look at what he said to them and he said unto them how is it that you sought me wish not ye know wish you not that i must be about my father's business he used the word again i must be about my father's business so the word must again comes in here you you realize that he was telling them that this is what i must do that's not looking for me i am doing my father's business my father's business is a must so the question again is have you been able to discover your must of life have you discovered the most of life reading also book of luke chapter 4 verses 42 and 43 luke 4 42 43 and when it was day he departed and went into this the desert place and the people sought him and came unto him and said unto him, and stayed unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them and he said unto them i must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also for therefore am I sent so you see Christ was saying here again I must preach the gospel to other people so he was able to know that his mandate his calling was not just for specific because remember here he had just preached a very part someone and there was this huge crowd that we are looking for him and they said stay with us we are here we still want to hear more he told them one of the most of my life is that I must also go out. Do you understand this most of life? Where you must be at every point in time. How when it is time to move on and to do the next thing. Otherwise, you can be captured, you can be you can be deceived by crowd, by people, by opinion of the world and you will lose the essence you will lose the most of life. Jesus said no, even as as much as I see the crowd here, I cannot be stopped. I know the most of life. My part of it is that I must go out. I must reach out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So and, and, and so we went back to look at it that from what Christ said in John chapter 9 and verse 4 that he said, I must walk the works of him that have sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work so last week I, I was sharing with us that for, by that statement when if you have night is he, he said day it means that in life there are four seasons the morning the afternoon the evening and the night so everybody goes through the morning season of life the afternoon season of life the evening season of life and the night season of life so you can walk in the morning you can walk in the afternoon you have still some little time to walk in the evening but the night season no man can walk and reading Ecclesiastes chapter 9 10 it tells us that we should walk whatever our hands find to do we should do it because there is no walk in the grave where we where man goeth once death comes in that is the end of it and this is something that we don't really know about when it will come for hebrews 9 27 says for it is appointed for man once to die but after that is the judgment so you see now that, that this is a season of the night season when you cannot do anything another way that we look about night season is also when there is when old age comes when you are no more strong as you used to be strong when you don't have the opportunity that you have you have now to do what you need to do there is a time and a season that the bible says that time and chance happened to them all time and chance happened to them all because the battle is not for the swift not for the strong 
So these are the times that you need to do what God has called you to do. There is a time to fulfill the most of life. So there are four seasons of life. And so we are looking at it now. What is the most of life? So here are three questions that we must all answer. Number one question is, what is the most of your life? What is the most of your life? It's important you know the most of life like Jesus Christ was able to know the most of his life. And that's why he was able to accomplish the purpose for which he was born. Number two question is, have you discovered the most of your life? Have you discovered it? And beloved, if you have not discovered it, you need to discover the most of life. Because that's when life begins. If not, without you discovering the most of life, I, say, I repeat again, you will end up losing the purpose for living. Number three, are you doing the most of your life? So, what is the most of your life? Have you discovered it? Are you doing it? To give us a better understanding, let us go back to Jesus Christ. He, how he was able to discover most of his life. And we find that in the book of John chapter 18, verse 37. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou says that I am a king. Listen to this. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. By these very statements, Jesus made some very powerful statements that gives direction and gives you the guideline to discover the most of life. He said to Pilate, to this end was I born. So, talking about the most of life, we're talking about why were you born? Have you discovered why you were born? The reason why you exist, why God put you here. And that's very important. And Jesus Christ also said, to, to this end was I born, for this cause came I into the world. This is why I was born. This is why I am in this world. My dear, watching, listening, hearing, today, as you look at this message, do you know why you were born? Forget about all that's happening around you. These all are, are smoke screens. They are not really the matter. What matters as far as life is concerned is to understand the reason why you were born. As a matter of fact, why you are here, your challenges many times help you to tell you who you are. If you tell me what you're going through, I can tell you how the degree to which you are important. Because if you find fruits on a tree, that's the reason why people throw stones to get it. Most trees suffer so much of stones and so much of attack because of the fruit in them. So many times you go through what you go through because of what you have fulfilled, what you are called to fulfill. Your assignment, your challenges many times in life defines your, de determines what you go through. What you go through is, is a way of letting you who you are. All those challenges, all those troubles, all those trials, all those difficulties, all everything you go through is... of what, what you are called to do. And Jesus Christ said to Pilate that I'm here to bear witness of the truth. Hallelujah. I love this. For this purpose I am here to bear witness of the truth. I am here for the truth. Part of fulfilling your most of your life is to represent God. Is to represent light. So, that's why the Bible says you are made in the image of God. You are not created by Satan. 
All those things that are happening to you that are that negative against the word of God, that's not why you are here. You are here because of God. And the only reason why many times is things are not going the way you're supposed to because you have yielded to the voice of another being. But if you get back to God today and say, Father, I return back to you, God will begin to use you for his purpose and for his glory, that you will fulfill the most of your life. Hear me and hear me well. There is something that you are here to accomplish. There are things that God wants to do in this world that he has not called another person to do but you. There are people you, are, you must reach. There are duties you must do. Without you, they cannot be done. That's how it is. And that's called the must of life. That's why you are so peculiar and so special. God's plan for your life is the most of life. God's plan for your life. So number one, to this end was I born, is the most of life. Number two, for this cause I came to the world, is the most of life. Number three, that I should bear with of the, of the truth, is the most of life. Number four, God's plan for your life is the most of your life. Number five, the issue ordained divinely for your life is the most of life. Number six, what is written in heaven about your life is the most of your life. What has God said about your life is the most of your life. That's why you are called. But what are the hindrances? What are the things that can hinder you from fulfilling most of your life. Number one is sin. Sin is a hindrance to the most of your life. The Bible says if he that committed sin is of the devil. The moment you about get into sin, you are not going to be able to accomplish it. He that covered his sins will not prosper. But whosoever will confess and forsake it shall have mercy. Sin is an hindrance. Sin is a barrier. You cannot strive. You cannot fulfill the mandate of God for your life. Sin is a human dilemma. So, for you to fulfill the most of your life, you must get rid of sin. Right now. Because as long as sin dwells in your life, it's going to be a problem. And the only way is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He is the only one that has the power over sin. Many people who live in sin, they know that what they're doing is not right. We don't have the power to overcome it. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But when we accept Jesus into our life, if we accept him into our life, he comes with the power of God to break the power of sin over our lives. We are no more under control of sin. And that's why you need Jesus into your life. You need Christ into your life. By receiving the word of God today, you can be set free. Another thing that hinders the most of your life is pride. Pride. God hates the proud, but lifts up the humble. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The reason why the enemy fell from where he was with God is pride. And anytime the devil wants to destroy an individual, the first thing he does is that he plants his seed, which is pride. And many times people say, I don't really, I'm not really proud. But by their reasoning, by their action, by their behavior, pride fills their heart. A haughty spirit, a self-centered spirit, the spirit of I know it all. I can do it by myself. Self-rule. I am in charge of my life. No one can talk to me. So that's the second hindrance. Number three is unteachable spirit. Anybody who cannot be corrected, anyone who is not teachable, will not be able to fulfill the most of life. You see, you need knowledge to be imparted into your life for you to have the most of your life fulfilled. But if you're not teachable, you know everything. Nobody can correct you. Then you cannot go because it takes you to have a teachable spirit to learn, to grow, and to fulfill your mandate in life. Even Jesus Christ, who, who we're talking about now, 
was teachable. He went to school. And that thing that can disrupt the most of your life is unbelief. When God speaks, you don't believe. Unbelief is the killer. It destroys individuals. And then another thing is distractions. You must have focus. Because once you are distracted by everything and anything, then you will not be able to feel most of your life. Imagine even where we read earlier on that Jesus Christ was being asked by the crowd, stay with us, stay with us. In today's world, where you have a population, a crowd following you, maybe you're a pastor, you're a leader, and here the people are saying, stay with us, stay with us. What are you going to look again for? Where people are, where, where you don't even know where, where they are. Until, unless you have the divine antenna that's able to receive signals from heaven that tells you to know where you must know. And you must know when to do the work and when to stop. Otherwise, you can be distracted by the crowd. They appear to be good. They appear to be nice. You can be easily distracted. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. You must focus. The word force means you must focus focus so distraction distraction can be a serious hindrance to fulfilling the most of god for your life and then number six the love of money the word of god tells us that the love of money is the root of all things it didn't say money is the root of all things but the love of money when you love money, when money becomes your God, you idolize money, you do anything for money, as long as money is involved, whether it takes you out from the will of God, it takes you out from the plan of God, you don't really care. Then you are not going to do it. There are a lot of people today who have abandoned the most of your life because of money, because of greed. Because if God has called you to do the most of his life, he will provide for you. And let me say to you, there is a pattern that God has laid for his work to be done. The work of God cannot be done haphazardly. Don't think that God accepts anything from you because you are brought to him. No, it must go by his rules, by his standards, by his specific instructions. Remember, Cain brought offering to God, Abel brought offering to God, but the Bible tells us, that Cain's offering was rejected and Abel's offering was received. Why? Because God has a pattern. We can't change the will of God. You can't change the plan of God. You must do things in accordance to the will of God. I have people who tell me, well, whatever I get is for God's glory. No. If you get money, if you pursue after wealth, if you pursue after riches, without minding the will of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God, the, the way it's supposed to be, it's, not, it's unacceptable. You cannot force your will on God. You can't bend the rules of God. So, the love of money is a, can be a big hindrance. And number seven, when you lose eternal values, when you have lost your mindset of eternity, you know, there are people who live today and they have lost focus of eternity. Listen to me. There is a day that is coming when Jesus will come back to earth, to this earth. Yes, to this earth. He will come to judge the world of sin and sinners. And God will use fire. Hear me here. Hear me well. God will use fire to annihilate the entire earth. The first time it was flawed. The second time is fire. The fire of God is coming to destroy everything that is not of God. Everything will be totally annihilated by fire. And it's only the righteousness of God in man that can sustain that man. And if you don't have this eternal perspective, you will, be able, you will lose your focus. You will lose your mandate. You will lose the most of your life. Think about it. Where will you spend eternity? And even when you, if you eventually make it eternity, you realize that you accomplished nothing because you are running other people's errand. That's why you have to be very careful. When you go to places and they have programs and they have plans, ask yourself, 
Is this in agreement to the will of God? Is it the word of God? Because you see things happen does not mean that God is there. Activity is not a sign of spirituality. You have to understand that everything must go in line with the God. So what do I do? You have to make restitution. You have to repent. If there's anything you're doing right now in against the will of God, you have to ask God for mercy. You have to pray that God will reveal to you the most of your life. You don't have to go for counseling. Ask God for counseling. God only people who can counsel you and bring to a place of total agreement with God. And may I say this to you? The Lord is waiting for you. That's why he has brought the message along your way. That you will make amends with him. That's why this message is coming your way. Are you ready to focus on the most of your life? I want to pray with you right now. Say after me. Yes, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Forgive my sins. I have not been able to understand the most of my life. Father, help me and give me grace to understand, to get back. Thank you for answer prayers. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to thank you for being a part of today's program. I'd like you to continue to watch out for a moment of change. I invite you to like our page and share with your friends what God has told you from this message. Until we meet again sometime, don't forget that change is not by chance. Change is by choice. Make that choice today and God bless you. Bye-bye now. Thank you.